<coughs> continue in our exploration in 562. We stopped somewhere in the middle. So again to review a little bit before we finish this hymn, what was this hymn about? It is by Shruta Vita Treya, the first hymn to Mitra Varun in the fifth book. Ritam Ritena Apihitam Dhruvam Suryasya Yatra Vimunchanti Ashvam Dashashata Sahata Sthukta Dekam Divanam Shreshtam Vapusham Apashyam Rishi does not hesitate to start immediately from the highest vision, from the first verse. He doesn't make any introduction. Immediately he says that the truth, that stable truth is covered by truth. Where the horses of the sun are unyoked, and set free to move, they are the work is done. There, ten hundreds stood together and were one. And that, the best of the embodied gods, I saw. Apashya. Tatsu vam mitra varunama hitvam irmata sthushir abhir duduhre vishvapin vathah svasaras yadhena anuvam ekah pavir avavarta. That is indeed yours, O Mitra Varuna. It is your greatness. That utter vastness of you, Mitra and Varuna, Mahitvam. There the Lord of the movement milks the herds of his stable radiances by the days. Now there is nothing, there are no herds here, only Tastushi, those who are staying there. He, Ahabhi, he by the days, Duduhre milks. Shrivindu makes more of it. There the Lord of the movement milks the herds of his stable radiances by the days. Lo, you twine swell all the streams of the blissful one, and your one wheel moves in their path. Ekak pavir avavarta. Adhara yatam prithivi mutadyam. Mitra Rajana Varuna Mahobhih Vardhayatam Oshadhih Pinvatam Gah Avavrishtim Srejatam Jiradam. You uphold earth and heaven. O Mitra King and King Varna, by your greatness, you increase the growth of earth, you nourish the shining herds of heaven. You pour forth the rain of its waters, O swift in strength, Jiradam. It's interesting that they are Mitra Varuna nourishing both heaven and earth. It's not only earth but also heaven. You nourish the shining herds of heaven, and they nourish also the earth, the growth of earth, the greeneries, ocean. It's just a review before we come to the part where we have to start. Avamashvasa suyujo vahantu yatarashmaya utayantu arvak ghritasya nirnik anubarta devam upasindhavav pradivi ksharanti. Let horses perfectly yoked with their well governed reins of light bear you down to us. The form of the clarity follows in your coming and the rivers flow in 
the front of heaven. It's a very mystic text. All these rays of light which are restraining the horses, perfectly yoked, should bring me Travarana. Everything is significant. Anushrutam amatim vardhat umkini. Varhir iva yedushara kshamana. Namasvanta dhrita dakshadhi garte. Mitrasati varunilasu antah. Increasing the strength that comes to our ear of knowledge, guarding by the sacrificial word, your wide realm, as if our seat of sacrifice, bringing obeisance, holding fast to judgment, you take your seat in your home, Omitra, within the revealings of knowledge of Aruna. Here somewhere we stopped. It was our last yes, somewhere, mm -hmm. fifth one. So the sixth was that which we never did. Akravi hasta sukrite paraspa yamtrasathe varunelasu antah rajanakshatra mahrini yamana sahasrasthunam vibharitha sahatvaru with hands that spare not, a kravi hasta. Actually, kravi kroj in Russian. Kravia, it says uh, this uh, red meat, uh, raw meat. Kruv, kruv. And in Russia, kroj means uh, rakta, this uh, blood. A kravi hasta means uh, not bloody hands, but Sri Aurobindo translates it differently, with the hands that spare not. Kravi Hasta could mean that it's the hand of my family, of my relatives, of my clan. Yes. So Kravi Hasta could have that who spares, because it's of my blood. Now a Kravi Hasta is that which does not spare, does not recognize the same blood. With hands spare that in what sense? spare. Spare in what sense? Who does not spare means? Mitra they do not spare anybody. Spare, how to translate? Otherwise, if punishment is to be given, yes. it's to be given. Yes. They don't spare. No. So the bloody hand would be in that middle. If the bloody hand not, I don't think that relatives of that, but bloody hand is going to do what it wants to do. I don't know what it has so to do. With, with hands that spare not, they will do what they is to be done. Mm -hmm. Except because they stand for the highest truth. Yeah, yeah. And yes, so they are the protectors of the beyond. Yes, so they do not have those um, bindings with with the blood or anything else. They do not have anything to revenge pity. or to yes. yes they are not going to pity. To pity. Right. Even if it is your own blood, there is no own blood in this sense. Yes. With the hands that spare not. Though, of course, traditionally there is no translation to this word at all. There are such strange translations, if you read them, you would not believe that it can be put on that level. Especially these words. You know? <coughs> and that uh, this word is met only in this hymn, only once. Then you don't have it anywhere else. <coughs> so, with the hands that spare not, protect us of the beyond. For the doer of perfect works, whom you deliver, and he dwells within the revealings of knowledge, <coughs> kings free from passion, together you uphold a thousand pillars strength. So the protectors of the beyond, it's my interpretation. Now here, Ahrini Yamana, those who are not free from passion, yes? who are not angry. Kshatra is the strength, which we've been translated strength, Sahasrasthuna, with thousand pillars. They bibritach, they uphold together. To them. The protectors of the beyond, they spare not the one who is perfectly offering himself. 
This is my interpretation. <laughs> Just you know, spare me for this. You, you will see why it is so. Whom they deliver in their revelations and expressions of knowledge. Ilasu antar. Inside these revelations. Upholding the strength in him conquering darkness. Together they stay full of peace free from any agitation. It's interesting that they do not spare the one young trasa thie, with the hands that spare not protectors of the beyond for the doer of perfect works whom you deliver. Why it is said with the hands that spare not and they deliver the, the man who is giving to them everything surrendering. Why it is said that with the hands that spare not Yes, they do not have any preference and still deliver men. So without any preference they do that. Impartially. Yes, impartially. Yeah, I think that's a group verse five and we see what is called how does it get this meaning of deliver? Trasathe, yes. Yes, Sukriti. Akrani Hasta Sukriti Paraspa. Yantrasathe varuna ilasu antah. Whom they deliver or but, protect. But whom is the person? Yes, it is, it is a man. So with the hands that spare not, the protectors for the perfect doer, whom they protect, so they are not sparing with their hands for the one who is perfect in his sacrifice. And this, there is a meaning in it, that's why I put it, they, they spare not the one who is perfectly offering himself. No. It means they will really take care of him. They will not spare him. They will not let him be in half light, half darkness. They will really come and do the job. No? If surgery is necessary, they will do the surgery. <laughs> That's what it means. They don't spare him who gives himself fully to them. That's like Mother says, uh, you know, Mahakali is only for the strong. Like once she said, if you once say that you want to do yoga, then it's finished, your life is so you fully everything. So then they take the rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. It's somewhere... This is the doer of perfect words. Yes. So they would not spare him, the doer of perfect works, because the, he is ready to receive the blow of, of heaven, finally. He is ready to give up everything, and they will not spare him. That's what I thought. It's a strange thought. Huh? Yeah, they have, but there is a comment. So, uh, spare not, yes. they also not get further. Yes, sure, it may not. Sri Aurobindo put comma there, for the reason, but in a Sanskrit text, Akravi Hasta Sukrite Paraspa, and suddenly Paraspa, Paraspa protecting the beyond. So protecting the transcendental, they will not spare the one who is perfectly offering. It's an interesting combination, yes? So they, because they are dedicated to the beyond, they cannot really spare the one means they would not let him be slowly or something growing if he calls for them. That's why Vasishta is always praying to, uh, to Varuna, please spare me. He is most afraid of Varuna. Because Varuna with his purity is uh, very, how to say, decisive when he comes. This establishment of what he brings yes, is crushing down all the formations. Yeah, I thought Somewhere mother said that, somebody asked her that, uh, is it so that when you are dedicating yourself to the divine that all whom you love will be taken away from you? And she said, no, it's not like that. It's only with those who are chosen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a very strange thing. More we have to take care of in the outer sense or in the bigger sense, yes, more we are kind of, we are spared by the divine, yes. 
spared in a sense that maybe we, we are given these toys still to play or something, you know, not to be completely naked in front of this force. So, in that sense, this not sparing hand for the one who is perfectly offering himself may make sense. And they are, they are together stay full of peace, free from any agitation. This was the passage we read last time to conclude our session. Uh, I put it for this verse, but uh, as Sukrit, as uh, I wanted to show that this one, one who is perfectly offering himself as Ashwapati will not be spared, and what it means not to be spared. Of course, that time I read it out of context. Now we can read it in this context. What does it mean not to be spared by Mitra and Varna? <laughs> a fit companion of the timeless kings, equaled with godheads of the living sons, he mixed in the radiant pastimes of the unborn, heard whispers of the play and never seen, and listened to his voice, that steals the heart and draws it to the breast of God's desire and felt its honey of felicity flow through his veins like the rivers of paradise made body a nectar cup of the absolute. In sudden moments of revealing flame in passionate responses, half unveiled, he reached the rim of ecstasy. A touch supreme surprised his hurrying heart. The clasp was remembered of the wonderful. And hints leaped down of white beatitudes. Eternity drew close disguised as love and laid its hands upon the body of time. A little gift comes from the immensities, but measureless to life its gain of joy. All the untold beyond is mirrored there, a giant drop of bliss unknowable overwhelmed his limbs and drowned his soul became a fiery ocean he fondled, drowned in sweet and burning vasts. The dire delight that could shatter mortal flesh, the rapture that the gods sustain he bore. Immortal pleasure cleansed him in its waves and turned his strength into undying power. Immortality captured time and carried life. A dire delight that could shatter mortal flesh. This is exactly where the spell is needed. Because if that dire delight touches our darkness, as Mother says, if Mahakali comes to our earth, it is the end of our earth. If she touches once with her uncompromising power of love, it will shatter the body of earth. It's so full of darkness, so little sustaining in light, that this dire delight cannot touch it. It has to spare it. So Mitra Varna, with the hands which do not spare, <laughs> come to the one who is perfect fully giving himself. Hiranya nirnik ayo asya sthuna vibhrajate divi ashvaja neva bhadre kshetre nimita tilvileva sanema madhu adhigartiyas Its form is of golden light. Iron is its pillar and shines in heaven as if the swift lightning in the happy field 
it is shaped or in the field of the gleaming. May we win possession of the sweet honey which is in that home. There are several footnotes for the swift lightning, Shurbindo says. The mare, the energy of the horse of life. For the happy field, the ananda, the bliss world. For the gleaming, the field of the gleaming of the dawns, the world of the light. And for the sweet honey, madhu, the song. It's interesting, Bhadre Kshetre Nimita. The golden purity in the form of light of which the iron pillar is the support here shines in heaven as a lightning whip which compels or which pushes or which whips the horses, horses to run. Ashva Janiva. It is that which is making horses run. It's the lightning. Divi Bharajate shines as a lightning. And here, or Bhadre Kshetre, in that supreme world of delight, Nimita, they are completely measured. In the field of bliss, they are completely measured. And in the field of the gleaming truth. Now, there are two fields are mentioned one is uh, bliss, the Ananda, another is gleaming truth. That's what Shirobindo says there. The light, the world of light, the supramental world. In these two worlds, they are perfectly measured, these horses. May we win possession of that honey of our higher home. Adhi Garti Asya. It's interesting. Garta was mentioned before as home, which we are building, manifesting. And Adhigarti Yasya, Adhigartya of our home, that which is above. Heran Yarupam Ushasovi Yushtao, Ayasthuna Mudita Suri Yasya, Arohatho Varunamitra Gartam Atascakshathe Aditi Didincha. To that home, whose form is of the gold, whose pillars are of the iron. In the breaking of the dawn, in the uprising of the sun, you ascend, O Varuna, O Mitra, and thence you behold the infinite and the finite. Hiran Yarupam Ushaso Viyushtao Ayasthuna mudita suri yasya arohatach varunamitra gartam atach chakshati aditim ditimcha. What is interesting here, so they have to ascend to this house, not to descend, but to ascend. Arohatach. You are ascending. And that's why this gartam, which Rubindu translates as. Uh, it doesn't say the home. Yes, you ascend only. It is translated in other translations as a garden can have a meaning of the throne on which you sit. So you always ascend to the throne to be a king, to sit in your most powerful position. Shubindo doesn't put this in the word. So from which they could see both the Aditi and Diti, Paraprakriti and Aparaprakriti. From the throne, they, uh, they, they are the lords of both worlds. The borders of the farm and farmless. Yes. Of the infinite and the finite. So the mystery of that home, whose form is of the gold and pillars are of the iron, is the secret of all creation. In this mysterious home, the dawn is breaking, and the sun is uprising. In this home, Varuna and Mitra ascend, from which they see the infinite mother, Aditi, the Paraprakriti, and the finite, dividing mother, Diti, of the Aparaprakriti, 
our consciousness is thus becoming aware of both manifestations. This is the supramental vision. Yet banhishtham nati vidhe sudano achidram sharma bhuvanasya gopa tena no mitra varuna avishtam sishasanto jigivam sarsiyama. That bliss of yours, which is most large and full and without a gap, O strong guardians of the world, so that none can pierce through and beyond it, by that cherish us. Mitra and Varuna, may we be victorious who would take possession of that peace. Now it's a little complex. <coughs> that bliss of yours, which is most large and full and without a gap, achhidram, so that none can peace nati vidhe from vyata nati vidhe not to by piercing not to come across so they are protecting they are not allowing anything to happen there is no gap in their protection between the transcendental and this world by that cherish us Shirobindu translates but usually he translates this root of as make us grow, protect and make us grow, increase us, yes. that we may be victorious. So the foundation, Sharma, which is the greatest and not to be pierced, which has no gap, by that you, Mitravarana, support us in our growth. May we be desirous to gain it, Sishasanto. Sishasanta is deserative from root sun to gain, to win. Sishasanta, uh, desiring to win. Siyama, may we be those who desire to win. It's not may we win, may we be those who desire to get your foundation. And the next word, Jigivansah, may we be those who have God conquered your foundation. May we have it conquered, occupied. It's from root G to conquer. G, Jayati. And it has a connotation of um, occupying, breaking through and occupying. It's my interpretation of root G according to the system of etymons that it has to have that meaning because as Sri Aurobindo explains this. Uh, Varna E. It has a tendency to occupy the goal. Yes. It is like an arrow. And root G in the Sanskrit is used always in this particular sense to very strange way. Svargam Jayate, they say. They conquer heaven. How can we conquer heaven? It's another question. Yeah? And they are speaking about conquest of the truth. How can we conquer the truth? The word conquer is only because English, you, yeah. you have to go through a lot of uh, struggle and hardships before you get it. When also, you get it, you got it fully. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, it's not conquered with, with It's not conquering the truth, it's conquering yourself before you come to yeah, the exactly. truth. Yes. <laughs> so conquering has this uh, kind of Atmanepada. <laughs> hidden within itself. Yes, so, yes it's, a, it's a confusion between languages. Yes, when we come to English, to conquer means completely different thing and it requires different regulations and so on. Yes, that's the whole hymn.